go ahead and get started. So first off, this is how the training will work. To limit background noise, I'm going to put everyone on mute. Uh, if you have a question or a topic that you would like to cover, go ahead and put it in the chat box. If it's a little bit more extensive, you can ask to be unmuted and I'll unmute you. Uh, we'll start with a brief introduction of Web Fortis, then we'll jump into the training, which will last for about 30 minutes, depending on how much we have to talk about. Um, if you have additional CRM questions and or help, um, feel free to email me. My email is mgep at webfortis.com. Please stay on topic if you have any bugs or anything of that sort. Um, we can take it offline. And, of course, use the same link and phone number to join the the training every Wednesday at 10 a.m. So we are Web Fortis. Um, we have been in business since 1996. We are up and down the West Coast with over 35 CRM trained um, certified individuals um, in offices in Seattle, uh, Walnut Creek, uh, Sacramento, Santa Rosa and Los Angeles. Um, we do CRM. That's all we do. We don't do anything else. We are a one-stop shop. Anything that you need to do with CRM, we're here for you. Um, the three books here are the three books that have been written by our CEO, um, and you can find them on Amazon or uh, Barnes & Noble. So let's go ahead and get started, jump right into the training. So are there any questions? Uh, let me go ahead and check my chat box. I don't have anything at this moment. So I'm just going to go ahead and start um, jumping into this. If you have a question, feel free to type it in and we'll get to it. Um, a question that I have gotten a lot recently is about the security settings. Um, a lot of our customers um, want to be in complete control of their system, but um, not have others have as much control over the system. And one example of that is that you do not want your um, CRM users to delete your uh, records in CRM. It is best practice to deactivate records instead of delete. Um, it's that way, if three years down the road you decide, oh, I need that information, you can go and you can find it. It's still in the system. It's just being separated from anything that's active. Um, so to do that, we're going to go into our settings. We're going to go into a system and then administration. And we're going to go into security rules. Out of the box, CRM has about 10 security rules, 16 security rules. Um, you may want to start with one of them, um, or you can create a brand new, spanking new one um, by going to new. I'm going to go ahead and take the salesperson role, and let's go ahead and edit that one. Something to note, the only one that you cannot change is the system administrator, and that is there for your um, uh, for you. Uh, you don't want to accidentally block yourself out of your system. So therefore, at least one person needs to be a system administrator and you cannot change that role. You will have access to everything if you are set as the system administrator. So first thing is we can change the role name if we would like. Um, we can also set the business unit which I will talk about in a little bit. 
Um, so the first thing is the core records, and these are going to be your accounts, your activities, uh, contact records, anything that's really general in CRM that's kind of used um, through all the sections. So um, we have a couple different columns here. And one is, the first one's going to be a create column. So you can give people access if they want to create or not. Actually, let's back up a little bit. Let's go to the key. So in the key, we have none selected, and that's going to be this red um, circle. And that means that they have no permission to do that. Um, the little piece, the ye little yellow piece, means that they can only do it for themselves. Um, they can't do it for anyone else. I had talked about um, business units um, when we were in the details section. Um, if it's the half yellow, they can only do it for anyone that's in their business unit. Um, so if anyone in their business own it, unit owns that record, then they're able to do it. If they don't own that record, they have no, um, no, uh, uh, they're unable to do anything with that. Next is going to be the green piece with the chunk taken out, and that's going to be a parent child business unit. So you can build your business unit so it's like a tree. Um, so you may have your sales managers above your salespeople, and that will give them access to everyone in their business unit and everyone in their child business unit. And then the full green is going to be our organizational um, so that everyone in the organization has, um, or you have access to do anything to any record that is owned by anyone in the organization. So the next thing is going to be the columns. And let's just go over the account. Let's simplify it, forget everything below account, um, and focus on account. So again, this is the out-of-the-box salesperson role. So this is all already created for us. Um, so in the account, they're able to create their own account records. They're able to read any account record that is in the system. They're able to write any account record that's in the system. They're only allowed to delete their own account records that they own. They can attach an account record to, they can attach um, any record to the account. Um, they can attach any record to the account record. Um, they can assign the record only to themselves, and they can share the record with anyone in the organization. So that's what those columns mean. Um, something else to note about them is going by and clicking one by one can be quite daunting. One thing is you may not want them to delete any records. Um, this out of the box, the salesperson, they're only allowed to delete their own, as you can see. Um, they have the yellow with the little piece in it, or they're unable to do it. If we want them to absolutely not be able to delete anything, we can click on delete, and that will change it. So we've changed it all to none selected. So if you know that you want to set that record, you go ahead and hit delete, and that's going to go ahead and do that um, across the board. You don't have to go into each individual one and click it. It's the same for over here, so if we don't want them to be able to import anything, um, we could go ahead and select that, and it will change it to none selected. So I have a question here. Is there a copy of the system default roles and permissions? Um, as far as I know, there is not. However, you can copy a role. So if you know that you're going to change one and you're not sure, um, it would be recommended to copy it um, so that you have the original. Um, Another thing to note about this, about uh, setting roles in CRM, is that um, a lot of times they'll get tweaked. You'll find um, that you will be setting roles and people will come to you and ask um, 
how come I can't do this? How come I can't do that? And um, sometimes you'll be like, because I don't want you to. Other times you may have to go in and actually change the role. Um, so again, we're in the core records area. We could go into the marketing. That's going to be campaigns and marketing lists, um, sales, service, business management, which will include a lot of miscellaneous privileges, um, including uh, being able to use the mobile client um, and uh, being able to send an invitation, exporting to Excel, etc. Um, so there's a couple different areas that you can go through. So once we're happy with it, we could go ahead and hit save and close. So now that we've set the permission for a security role, the next step will be to add it to a person. So we're going to go back into system administration and then let's go into users and this is where we're going to be able to add users, we'll be able to subtract users, um, and we'll be able to edit any of the information for a user. So to add a new user, we could go ahead and hit new. And since I don't have any more licenses, it's asking me for this trial. It's asking me to purchase more. Um, so instead, I'm just going to go ahead and open my user record. However, at this point, if we were to add a new, uh, we would go ahead and put in a first name, last name, an email address, um, and then we would also set them to a business unit, and we would set their security rules at that point. However, if a user is already in the system, we would be able to open it up. We can go to security roles. And we would be able to um, add roles here by going to manage roles and selecting whichever ones we want. Um, in some cases, if you have a couple different roles, you want to see which ones um, they are associated or what what privileges they're given. We go ahead and click it. That's going to open up the security role uh, uh, form that we were just in. Um, another thing to note about um, security roles is one thing you might notice here is we have two associated with my user record. We can have as many as we would like. Um, one thing that may come up is we do not have to delete privileges at all in the uh, salesperson role. However, if we open the system administrator role, we would have delete privileges. Um, so which one is going to be the one that's, that's actually going to be enforced? Um, if you have privilege to do it, then that one will take over. So my system administrator ability to delete records is going to take over my salesperson uh, uh, ability to not delete records. So it's going to overwrite it. So I'm going to go back into the administration area and I'm going to talk a little bit about business units. So um, really business units are going to be used a lot for security roles. It's going to be um, a way of setting up your uh, tree of, of um, people and what you want them to see, what you want them to be able to create, what you want them to um, do in your system. Um, so to create a business unit, you'll go to System Administration, click on Business Units, and by default there will always be one business unit. Um, if I go ahead and select New, 
I could give this a name. I'll call it sub BU. Um, I don't really need to fill out any of the other information. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. That's going to activate the sidebar over here. So at this point, I could go into business units. Let me go ahead and open the main one. So from here, we'd be able to add users by going to the users area um, and adding any users we may need. Um, we can add other business units. So the sub business unit is going to be a business unit within um, the CRM training web Fortis. Uh, business unit. We can also create teams within our business units um, and facilities and equipment and resource groups, which is a whole nother box of worms, so I'm not going to get into that. Um, but that is available within um, the business units area. Um, so as I had mentioned with the security privileges, there was the uh, uh, green with a slice taken out, which was a child um, parent business unit. Um, so to just elaborate on that, if someone was in a C the CRM training web for this business unit and they had that privilege, they would be able to see the sub business unit, um, any of their records, be able to do anything within that. However, it does not gonna, it's not going to work the other way around. So if someone was in a sub-business unit, um, they would not necessarily see any of the records that the CRM Training Web Fortis business unit was unless it was set to organizational. So we have about another five minutes, um, if there's any further questions. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pull up my contact information. Go to that slide. Um, so uh, visit us on the web, www.webfortis.com. Um, that is our office phone number there, 916-712-5451. My email address, again, if you need to contact me for any reason or any questions come up, um, follow us on Twitter. Um, our hashtag is WebFortis, um, and like us on Facebook. Um, and, of course, visit us again next Wednesday at 10 a.m. for our open training. Thank you.